the day I landed in Vietnam, I knew that this was a, this was going to be a tough thing. It was always scary. I mean, I never at one moment of that time in Vietnam ever felt like I wasn't afraid. June 29th, we had our whole company working together. We set up a, um, a, an LZ, a landing zone, for the helicopter to come in. And because we were out in the field for 30 days at a time, they would have to bring in supplies and ammunition. I had sent a couple of the guys up after the helicopter. And they were all 20 feet away from me. And I thought, well, I better run up there too. I need to ask a couple of questions on what we're going to do tomorrow. I turned around. I, I took a couple of steps when somebody further up tripped a bouncing Betty landmine. It was so strong that it killed four guys and wounded 12, and, and, and I was one of them. They carried me into the tent, into the hospital tent there, and I went inside there and I went unconscious. I woke up in Yokohama, Japan, and looked at the end of the bed, and what you see is, is what happened to me. When I woke up in Japan, I got better really quick. And my brother's wife had a friend that was in the military, a very high-ranking officer, and they came out and picked me up and drove all over Japan. I remember driving all over Japan in fact, and, and again, my legs were still open with bandages on them. I just felt like, heck, this is great. I'm, you know, I'm out doing things. So I never, I never felt like in my life I ever slowed down a whole lot. I just kept going. After I lost my legs, I just wanted, this just sounds so corny, I want people to know that I am just like anybody else. I can do whatever, whatever I want to do and whatever I set my mind to. I think I have this, like, I'm going to do it. Don't, don't help me. <laughs> There's not a lot to do when you're a bilateral above amputee. I mean, you can do weights and things like that, and you go to the gym. But what happened was there was a group of guys, and I'd heard about uh, wheelchair basketball. When I came home from my uh, first basketball practice, my hands were completely covered with blisters. But man, when you can't even close your hands or open your hands, and then I go back to another practice, I've got tape all over my hands, and. It was just incredible. It, it's, it was so much fun. How I segued into the road racing and the way that fit was that road racing started becoming really, really popular in the mid-70s. And I thought, well, wow, this is great, you know. So I got, got involved with that, and it just it took over. I'd go out and I'd do 20-mile rides. I'd do 15-mile rides. On, on my racing chair, and I've worked and worked and worked. I've probably done a hundred marathons in my life, and and what an opportunity to meet great runners, stand-up people, other wheelchair athletes. Travel all over the world, traveled to Europe, to Asia, and and just would never have thought that that would ever happen in my life. Yeah, this is where I started everything right here. I had a whole bunch of ideas and. Uh, wanted to come up with different products to make so persons with disabilities could really do things. When I started uh, Magic in Motion, which is the name of the company, uh, we, we wanted to take it to do every single product we could possibly do. And the wheelchairs back then weighed about 55 pounds. And a friend of mine and myself came up with this little baby. Now obviously all the wheels are gone on it, but what you see is you see a lightweight aluminum frame. That dropped the weight of that wheelchair from 55 to 24 pounds. It actually won the Boston Marathon in that frame. And then we went to this frame. Look at the difference. This is, this is the evolution of that wheelchair. That wheelchair went from a little square box aluminum frame with a whole bunch of rules to a frame that the total weight with the wheels and everything is 15 pounds, 15 pounds. The mono ski was developed by 
myself and Jamie McCormick here in Washington State. We wanted to be able to be so you could be self-sufficient. You get on the chairlift, you get off the chairlift, you can ski by yourself, you can do everything by yourself. You know, really that's what it's all about, is, is being able to get back out there and do whatever I did before and, and uh, just maybe do it a little bit differently. Man, I tell you, it, it's, you can't even imagine how great it is for somebody that has not been able to ski for uh, 20 years and now being able to go back up there and do it. And, and I, I never look back. I think that sports is a huge factor in speeding up the recovery of a person with disability. You have to some way get your brain away from what I used to have to what I have now. I'm not sure what my life would have been like had, had I not uh, lost my legs. I, I absolutely know I wouldn't have traveled all over the world, but I, I just, I can't imagine ever doing the things I've done. It's just, it's, the opportunities have been huge, incredible. The VA is so far ahead of everybody else, it's scary. More hand cycles, more wheelchairs, bikes, basketball chairs. Try everything. Try it, try it, try it. I guarantee you'll like it.